We are both natural partners. Our businessmen know each other very well. They've been talking to one another for the last hundred years or more. I can think of two areas where actually they can make a big contribution in terms of new areas for growth. One would be the digital economy. During the pandemic, we saw for ourselves how people have changed their lifestyles. They work from home, they shop from home, and they study from home. And this is a trend that is going to be probably permanent. So they should be promoting that. There's a new economy that's going to contribute tremendously to both our economies. The other thing I think we can do is a green economy. Both of us, Singapore and Malaysia, are committed to fight climate change. We are doing research, we are doing research. Why not work together in some kind of combined research areas to identify new low-carbon solutions? How can we store carbon? How can we store hydrogen? How can we uh, basically uh, capture them and store them? This is one area we can cooperate. There will always be challenges, right? Because you, first and foremost, you need a mindset change. To decide, look, I want to move away, let's say, from fossil fuels to using renewable energy. And then secondly, you need to find areas where you can actually develop the renewable energy. So it requires a mindset change and a sort of push from the governments to say, look, let's go down this path. And then, of course, when something like the Ukraine war happens, in, for example, in Europe, they are moving in the direction of the green economy, and suddenly they need to think of going back to using coal and fossil fuels. So a bit of a setback. But I am confident that despite these setbacks, these are minor setbacks, all of us realise that unless we do something to tackle this climate change problem, all of us are in trouble. We can perhaps cooperate in tourism. Uh, now that you know the, the borders have opened up, people are beginning to travel a lot more. I think uh, we probably get back to the pre-pandemic levels in a few months, to six months, maybe to a year, maybe back to what it was travel has boomed, we should be looking for opportunities to promote the tourism cooperation between Singapore and Malaysia. The first cruise ship in Southeast Asia that took off from Singapore, where did it come from? Singapore to Port Klang. You know, the checkpoint is crowded again. Uh, it's the busiest border checkpoint in the world in the past, right? And I think it'll become the busiest border checkpoint in a matter of time. So I've been here about almost close to eight years in uh, Malaysia. Come November, it'll be eight years. There are a lot of connections in Malaysia. And many of these people have always been friendly to me and always been open and welcoming. We should never assume that one country can prosper and succeed without the other country prospering and succeeding. Singapore needs Malaysia, Malaysia needs Singapore. It is not a zero-sum game. It is a game where you just grow the pie. So we need to work closely together, Singapore and Malaysia, to make that pie get bigger and bigger. A close neighbour is better than having a distant relative. right? I think the Singapore-Malaysia relationship should be seen in that light. We have just celebrated our National Day a few days ago. We'll be celebrating your National Day in a few days' time. I think both sides should be bearing in mind that, 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 that kind of saying that we can grow together and succeed together. Thank you very much.